you today about our cream of sacrifice, explore it through the lens of the Muslim holiday Eid al-Aha. And that means that I will be talking about human sacrifice and animal sacrifice. I will also talk about slavery and I will talk about our borders and the, the issues that are happening there, as well as gun violence. If this is too much for you to hear today, please go ahead and um, stop listening to this sermon. I wish you peace and love. We're about to explore some themes that make me uncomfortable as a Unitarian Universalist. I struggled to write this sermon because Eid al-Adha celebrates some ideas that I find objectionable. It is also a narrative that I find difficult to connect with at times. And I also find it to be a holiday that marks a very precious time in all of our lives. Imagine that you are a married couple who have waited for your whole life to conceive a child but not any child, a son. And when I say your whole life, I mean that you're 80 years old and you haven't conceived this child yet. So you pray, you pray every day and God tells you that your son will come and you are so devout and you believe what God is telling you. And God says, you will have an extraordinary son who will usher in the lineage of the Messiah. So one day your wife, who has not had any luck becoming pregnant, brings you her female slave as a concubine to produce this child that God has promised you. She says, Abraham, we can do this. If I can't bear a son, maybe it can happen if you lay with Hagar. And you do lay with Hagar. And behold, a child is born. You name him Ishmael. God says, yeah, that really wasn't the son I was talking about. And, and he too will do some great work, but not the super special things that I promised. So, so Ishmael grows for 13 years with no sibling. God tells you, have faith. Your special son is coming. So you wait another 10 years. And finally, you are 90 or 100, depending on the text, and Hagar is 80 or 90, and a child is born, and the child's name is Isaac. Everyone is happy with Isaac. Later in your life, God calls upon you to take your child up a mountain and sacrifice him. Although from your experience with God, you know that human sacrifice was, was not required. It isn't required to have a relationship with God. And you're devout. And because you place God above everything else in your life, you gather up your two male servants and your son. It gets tricky here because depending on who's telling the story, the son was either Ishmael or Isaac. But let's just say it's Ishmael. So you take your son Ishmael up the mountain. And the story goes that you say to your son, God told me that I have to sacrifice you. And Ishmael says, well, dad, if God told you, let me carry the wood. I know that you're going to need to tie me. And I know that I want to obey God. But you know how it is. I might try to fight for my life. So please let me carry the wood. Then you agree to let him carry the wood. You get to the mountain. You tell the male servants to wait. And you and Ishmael go to the top of the mountain. And you lay out the wood. And you tie him prostrate to the wood. And you pull out your knife to stab him. You say to yourself, you know you love this kid. But God asked it, so you must obey. And you go to strike Ishmael. And just then an angel appears. And the angel says, wait. Wait, you've proved to God that you'll obey. Just sacrifice the ram instead. And you think to yourself, what ram? And in the bush, a ram appears. 
you untie the kid and you both work to sacrifice the ram and back down the mountain you go. That story is chilling to me and it's also awe-inspiring. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his beloved son to obey God. I kept repeating that, self, that to myself and I thought, what am I willing to sacrifice? What is the mountain that I will climb? And, and that's the question I've asked since I learned of Eid al-Aha. Muslims aren't not only celebrating Abraham's devotion to God. They're also celebrating each person's connection to sacrifice. And, and some Muslims who are carnivores still have an animal slaughtered and they divide the meat. They give one third to strangers who are suffering. They give one third to their friends and families and they keep one third for themselves. You see, this holiday calls you to examine if you're connected in a way that encourages you to take responsibility for your whole community. It helps you to see your interdependence on the community that you live in. It encourages you to go without, to feed the more significant needs of the community. These thoughts, they brought me to think about the news that we are hearing on a daily basis about gun violence and our crisis at the border. I think about the videos of children crying into cameras because their parents have been captured and taken and parents crying into cameras because their children have been captured and taken. And I think of our children who've been institutionalized in foster care because their parents have been institutionalized in prisons for low level crimes. What are we willing to sacrifice to feed our communities? This question is a tough question to ask you use because generally we're doing something. We are the believers in social justice. We are on the side of love. We are protesting, we're writing letters, we're showing up, we're getting arrested, we're doing programs, yet what are we sacrificing? The question of sacrifice is individual. It's a question for our churches, it's a question for our faith, and I can answer the question for myself in this public forum. I want to name that to become a UU minister, I have sacrificed my comfort and my stability. I am living at a level of poverty that I haven't experienced since childhood. I am incurring a debt that will take me the rest of my adult life to pay off. I am sacrificing the wants of my families and the needs of my family in order to do what I've been called to do. I'm sacrificing for a faith that struggles to hire and maintain black and brown ministers. I'm sacrificing for a faith that struggles to hire and maintain non-binary and transgender ministers. Yet I've been called to be a UU minister. So I sacrifice these things. Even still, that's not enough. Even still, that is not enough. I ask you again, what are you sacrificing? And the next question is to whom? Abraham sacrifices to God and mine is to Unitarian Universalism. What do you think America is sacrificing? When I think about it, I think we're sacrificing our safety. I think about gun violence often. I grew up in almost every social economic class. I've been exposed to wealth and poverty. And when I lived in poverty, in poor neighborhoods, gunshots and gunplay were an everyday occurrence. Even now, in my neighborhood, occasionally, I will hear gunshots. I've grown accustomed to them because of my early exposure, whereas my children and my wife are not. When I see the fear that they express, I ask myself, why am I so well conditioned that I only get afraid when I know that the shot came from a block away? Why am I so traumatized? We are sacrificing the lives of people in the neighborhoods where gun violence is as everyday as receiving mail. I think about how we try to prepare and we also traumatize our children when we teach them about active shooter incidences. 
My first grader came home from school to tell me he knows all of his active shooter alerts and protocols, and he knows all of his lockdown procedures. He was excited because he was smaller than the other first graders, so he could hide in more places in the room. What are we sacrificing? We are sacrificing our country to the god of guns. Will we continue to do this? My neighborhood and the neighborhoods that I grew up in are also plagued by for-profit prison systems. I vividly remember children being picked up from school to go to foster care because their parents wrote a bad check. They were found with marijuana in their pocket. They missed probation appointments for work. And none of these crimes affected their ability to parent, but it does send them in one more it sends them one more person into the modern day slavery of the for-profit prison system. It does send one more child down the pipeline from the classroom to the foster care system to the prison prison system. We are creating our own slave class. I'm going to say it again. We are creating our own slave class. We are sacrificing our children and the poorest members and the black and brown and the other other people to the God of profit. We are willing to continue to sacrifice them. Are we willing to stop this sacrifice? I think of the children who are coming home to empty homes after ice raids. I think of the parents who have traveled so far and who've done everything they can to get their children here to safety only to have them snatched away and put in inhumane conditions. I think of the parents who are struggling in these same inhumane conditions without their children. What have they sacrificed for freedom? I think of these children and I see their young warrior faces with streaming tears and they're speaking out against the destruction of their families. They have spoken their truth and they demand justice and I know that they've been on the minds of many people here. To whom are they being sacrificed? To the God of hate? To the God of fear? America needs us. The world needs us. We need to take stock of what is important to us and get to work. Maybe, maybe we'll sacrifice the privilege of remaining divided in a common cause. Perhaps we won't allow our egos to get in the way of progress. Maybe we'll write that one more letter to our elected official or attend that one more meeting to organize and do the work on our own issues that keep us from being connected to people close to us and to the larger world. We can choose to make a sacrifice that benefits the whole. I'm going to say that again. We can choose to make a sacrifice that benefits the whole. It is in our hands now. We are the people. We are the ones that we have been waiting for. We can unite. We will rise if and only if we choose to sacrifice.